hello today we're ready to make our fabric covered rope bowls and containers and I've got two planned one's going to be more like a decorative pot and the other is going to be a container with a lid I'm excited to make that and these are going to have integrated handles which I'm excited about also for 15 of you out there, you have strip sets coming to you in the mail. And then you'll need to get a hank or two of inexpensive rope from Walmart or Home Depot, wherever. And it can be cotton, polyester, just inexpensive rope, about a quarter of an inch diameter. And your sewing machine, and you are ready to go. So, let's get busy, because I can't wait to see these containers be born. Here are the two that I have in mind. I sketched them out to kind of remind me of how to shape the rope, fabric rope balls. This one's gonna have to ha have a, this one's gonna have a lid, and this one is just a container. I've never made either of these type containers, so it'll be interesting to find my way as we go. Now, the first thing you're gonna need is an inexpensive rope that's about a quarter inch diameter might be just a little touch bigger but you can find these at any home improvement store at Walmart anything like that and they're just cheap cotton or polyester rope very inexpensive then you're going to need to have some fabric strips and I'm very lucky I got these from by the pound from pineapple fabrics and these are what's left over when they've cut the pieces for their kits and it's perfect for this job so here I started to try several different ways the way that I first learned was to take a strip of fabric like this fold it in half wrong sides together and press it then to take the rope and hold it with the folded edge leading and then wrap it around encasing part of the earlier wrap so that you have no raw edges showing see the raw edges will be down here and you keep covering it as you go and I made a bowl that's just fine out of this and it's just fine if that's what you wish to do also I found it a little difficult on my fingers I found that it was hard to keep wrapped you had to kind of hold it if you stop take a pin stick it down the middle of the rope to hold it together like that and it also used an awful lot of fabric and I'm rather frugal as you probably know so th I didn't want to do this way with this one but it's perfectly acceptable if you wish to do it then I thought I will get out a clover tape maker and you take and you cut it the right width for this tape maker which this one I believe you cut them about three quarters of an inch to an inch you feed it into the bottom and then I found it was easy if you took a pin and kind of pushed the fabric through to get it out of the tip and then came down to the tip and pulled it the rest of the way through here it is and what this does is when you push this in and you try to keep it even here when you push it through it pre-folds it for you and then what you would do is lay it on your ironing board and you would press press this part as you pull this along now it seemed to work pretty good but I noticed that when then when I started wrapping it around it wanted to unfold it wanted to kind of spring apart so I thought okay wrap this around 
and it would be it would save fabric if you could wrap edge to edge but that's really hard to do and the fabric was not cut on the bias so that was kind of hard to do and hard to get a smooth look but it did waste less a little less fabric because you were able to cut your strips narrower so I said no I don't think that's what I want either and plus you have to keep this centered when you're ironing it and pull it through slowly and try to make sure it doesn't gather underneath so it was a little time consuming none of this is going to be really easy now you could take your strip you could take your strip and make it a little narrower than this but you could take it and just leave your raw edges but I want a nice clean finish for these baskets so I put those aside so I put those aside and what I decided to do is to make a tube out of the fabric a tube like this and then I'm going to use my bodkin to feed the tube onto the rope and that way with that tube you don't waste fabric and I found it a relatively easy it had its moments but and you, if you don't have a bodkin you can use a safety pin I'm going to show you how did I make this tube and this is the bodkin that I like to use you can also use a safety pin which will work very good as well I'm going to go ahead and sew these strips together into a tube then turn them inside out and then pull the rope through and I just wanted to show you to work on this today I'm using a gray thread a good medium to medium dark gray thread gray is my go-to color because it blends with everything so let me load my bobbin I'm working today on my Elna 7200 Quilters Dream I've had this for almost 15 years it's been a pretty good little workhorse my favorite machine is a Juki and I believe it's like a 720 I do love that machine whoops I just realized my presser foot was loose that would have caused a problem if it had come off while I was sewing so be careful always check your equipment I know from making this casing that I need to have a little bit of the casing show on this side of my zigzag foot and I'm just going to go along and sew nice and straight all right then I'm going to take this off now normally I would put a bunch of strips together so I'd have one long piece which certainly makes it easier as you go so I'm cutting off the excess I've got a selvage here which just adds bulk that I really don't need so now I've trimmed it I take and put the bodkin inside the fabric now this is the only tricky part put the bodkin inside the fabric now I want to push the fabric down in between the teeth and I have to make sure I get a good chunk in between those teeth nice good chunk then then I take the ring down here and I push the ring up until this ring fits tightly at the top here 
then that way I know it's holding on to that piece of fabric and I very carefully slide this fabric and pull it over itself. You see what I'm doing here? And then push a little more fabric. Keep pushing the fabric gently over on itself and don't be rough because you'll pull the fabric out of the teeth of the bodkin. And that's not going to help anybody. So, once I get it fully out like this, then I can grab that bit of fabric better. And I, and I can then pull a little harder. So see how I have this? And I pull the rest of this out. Okay. So now, I have my tube turned inside out. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I did so much of this. I did a piece that was probably about 30 feet long last night. And be careful because you'll make blisters on your finger. So be careful. So now what I want to do is take my rope. Let me find a good end of the rope. Here it is. Okay, here's a good end of the rope. And put the bodkin so that the teeth are into that rope. Then push this ring up to hold tightly. Okay, and luckily the way you pull this through, it constantly reinforces the ring staying at the bottom. So I feed the bodkin into the string. Now this part is the only hard part because it's just a matter of getting it started over the, the end of the rope and the bodkin. But let me see. I think I might just... There we go. So it's just a matter of pushing the bodkin through and pulling the fabric onto the rope. And then you see you have a very nice fabric covered rope. So that's what we're going to be doing. Now before we do that, I need to sew all of these strips together. I'm taking my bodkin out here. Alright, I'll leave that aside for now. I've got bobbins wound and ready to go. Because when I get going sewing, I don't like to stop and wind bobbins. So then I have my fabric segregated into colors and fabrics so that I can make sure to disperse the fabric pretty evenly. And I love this fabric line. It is just beautiful. And I think these bright sherbet colors are going to make a wonderful basket. Alright, so I've got all my stuff here. And I'll grab my first piece of fabric. I'll grab this one and I'm going to take another piece of fabric, lay them down right sides together, and sew them together to start my strips. So I'm just going to sew them end to end to end. Then I bring this up and I sew this on. And I keep all my selvages to the same side. Just makes it easier when I trim it in the end. And it makes sure that I have them lined up too, which is good. And this piece is thinner. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of divide the middle here. Put it about there and I'm hoping that will do good because it's wide enough to make into a tube it's just not as wide as the other pieces
But as you can see, I don't worry about every be everything being just perfect. This is a fun basket. This is not science. I'll keep sewing and then come right back with you as soon as I'm done with this part. I've sewn all my strips together. Now I trim them. I did it by chain piecing one after another. So I cut them apart. When I cut these apart, I'll have a nice long rope of them. Okay, so now I have a nice long rope. I'm inside out. Put the right sides together. So inside, you can still see where that white part of the seam allowance is. Stay away from the white. I don't want that to show in my rope basket, leaving a little bit of an edge here. Stop every once in a while and check to make sure that you still have the right amount underneath because if you end up running off the underneath side you'll have it opening a gap and that's no fun to fix. I've also reduced my stitch down to a 2.0. want a little tighter stitching because this is, I'm going to do some serious pulling and tugging on this. First I have to turn it right side out and then I have to pull it onto the rope. I don't know if you could hear, but while I was sewing, my machine was sounding like it was having to punch through the fabric. So what I'm going to do really quickly is change my needle. I think that sound will go away, but sometimes you know, our needles get dull and we forget to change them. But I'm just hearing a noise that I didn't want to hear. When the needles get dull, they do have to kind of pop through the fabric. So let's just change it, make the machine happy. I'll be happy. Okay, tighten that. Alright, now I'll re-thread my machine. Alright. Let's see if it sounds better. No, nah, still making that noise, so it just must be... I don't know what that's about. But usually something like that will take care of that sound. Sometimes it gets tricky 
when you try to line up the different widths of fabric. But just take your time and you'll get it. Don't forget, this Saturday, the next Jenny Byer Stellaris Clue comes out. I can't wait. I'm very excited about that. And then after I finish this video, I'm going to do another video to finish up the beach landscape. Because I'm ready to start a new project. I just noticed something along one of the selvages. It said that that was commercially licensed fabric and you could use it for personal use but not to make items to sell. Very interesting. Okay, I'm about finished sewing this strip. Okay. You won't believe how much of this tubing I have. There. So I made the big hank of tubing, fabric tubing, but I think I'll turn that inside out tonight. Sit in my reclining chair watching TV. Mindless. I love that kind of stuff. But be careful. I may need to put some gloves on because last night I made so much that I gave myself little blisters from turning it inside out. It's not. It's it's not the easiest work, but it's certainly not hard. So, this is, this is all of the fabric covered rope that I made last night. I can't wait to turn it into a work of art. So let's get started. All right, here's my machine. And I've got it set up with nice neutral gray thread top and bottom and I like to wind my bobbins ahead of time because it's all fun until the bobbins run out so let me find the end that I want to start with and we'll get going okay that's the purple here it is here's the end that I want to start with and I've already taken and sewn the fabric even with the rope and so let's see what we can do all right so what we're going to do is we're going to take and this is called co a coil this will be a coil basket or coil container if this were a coil of clay we would make a, cl a clay basket the exact same way and basically what you do is you lay it down and you just start coiling it around on itself whoops let me show you again you would just coil it around on itself this is the beginning of many types of baskets any coil basket now whether you use pine needles whether you use palm grasses what whether you use clay you coil it if this was clay you'd coil it and then smooth it out okay I've chosen this neutral gray because when you lay the thread across the fabric it's barely noticeable I I tried this out by laying white thread across then black thread cost and they both showed too much so I've got my gray thread in my machine and I'm going to get this going turn this on a nice wide zigzag stitch and 
gently start to sew. Now I may use a hand needle for the sides, but I thought for the base I wanted to get this well sewn and nice and tight. So I am going to, let's turn this around. I'm going to sew all across to make sure it is all tightly sewn together. Okay. come across this way and this is just to make sure that the first part is sewn together and then I'll show you how I do it from there out I think I've done a pretty good job let me get some scissors and cut these loose threads I don't want these loose threads to end up catching my presser foot and slowing me down so okay so I've got a nice little beginning but what I'm going to do is just zigzag as I wrap these pieces around so I'll be turning it and zigzagging and turning and zigzagging be careful not to get your finger caught underneath. This would be good. Hold on just a second. Yes. Let me try maybe to use my hemostats over here. Something so that I don't hurt my finger as I'm turning this around. Oh, that works much better. You know, I've always wondered what to do with these hemostats. I just keep winding it around, winding it around. I've got a size 14 needle in. I wanted to get something a little heavier. Jeans needle, something like that. Nice and heavy. So, because you are sewing through the fabric and the rope. Now that it's gotten out far enough away from that little needle screw, I can bring my hands back in. But remember that those hemostats came in perfect, came in handy. I, I, I bet you you could use pliers or stiletto, just something to help you get your fingers right in under there. Now I'm noticing right here, I don't have a piece sewn down well. So I'm going to break my thread, come back in here, do my zigzag across here, and do my zigzag across here. It was just one little loop. It must have been under that needle screw, and I was afraid to get my hands caught. So now it looks like everything is caught. And you can feel this stiffen up as you do your zigzag. So keep pushing the pieces in, rolling it around while I'm stitching. Whoops, sometimes you get a little bit off. Just back it up and do it again. Now 
and I don't really care where my my seam is on my casing. I don't really think it matters. By the time you get this all sewn together, I don't think anybody's looking to see where your seam is. I first thought I might have to put my seam to the back or something so it wouldn't be noticeable. But with all this color and beauty, I don't know what if it's really noticeable. Okay, I've got to decide the base of this container. Oops, let me back up. Took my eyes off of it. If you find that you've gotten off track, please go back and stitch it. You don't want... Once you get building up the sides of this, it would be very hard to try to patch the bottom. So make sure before you leave this stage, you are done. Okay, so I think that's a good base for my container. Now what I'm going to do is start forming it up the sides. This is why it's important I didn't want to use glue. So what I've done is I've found some nice, sturdy, sharps needles right here. Nice, big, sturdy needles. And this is a Coates and Clark's 1 slash 5. I guess that's the different sizes in the needles. And I have had these I don't know how many years. But I'm going to pull out one of these because I want a nice sturdy needle. I'm going to use hand quilting thread. And I chose out of the colors I had, I chose this baby blue because it's the closest to the neutral gray. So actually it's like a uh, grayed sky blue. So I'm going to go ahead and thread this needle. I'm going to use a double thickness of this thread. Oops, I'll get it, don't worry. Okay, I'm going to use a double thickness of this thread and make it where it's about two feet long but it's doubled okay bring the ends up to where they're pretty even and then I'm going to make a triple knot because I want the knot to hold well Ru pull the knot down to the end of the thread cut off the tail. Then I'm going to take some beeswax and I'm going to coat this and I'm going to coat it liberally because this is going to get a lot of friction going in and out of that fabric and I want it to help make it easier on my hands to go through the fabric and to keep the thread from fraying with the friction of being pulled in and out. Now, if you don't have beeswax, you can use an old candle. Rub it against an old white candle, clear candle, or you can buy a silicone type product like the old Thread Heavens. What I'm going to do is I want to hide the knot in between the rows. So I'm going to come in here so that when I pull it up, the knot is going to be wedged right in between those rows and you'll never see it. This is why I didn't want to use any glue on any types of covering of my rope because I want, knew I wanted to try to hand sew the sides and glue would have made it very hard for me to do. So now what I'm going to do 
is I'm going to go down through all of this fabric on this side of the rope. I'm trying not to get the rope because that just makes it harder for me. Pull it down. Then come back up on the inside through the rope. So first I went through the new piece. Then I came up through the existing bottom. Now I'm going to go back down through the new piece. And I go all the way down. Okay. And as I'm doing this, I'm kind of, with my finger, pushing this rope up. Because I'm going to start forming the sides. This is going to be the container I'm making down here. I've done the base. Now I need to push the rope up and sew it so that it's kind of sitting a little bit on top of that base. Okay? So here we go. Now at some point I'm probably going to put a thimble on and then I will put some kind of cot on my finger that makes it easy to grab the needle. Some little grabber thing. And I've got the ones that are adhesive that stick to your fingers so you don't have to stop and pick them up and and go again. So this so one on the way up I'm coming through the basket wall the base. On the way down I'm going through the fabric covered rope. Okay, and make sure that, let me see, I got this a little tangly, let me see if I can fix it, yes I can, okay, and pull it tight, so make sure, check when your stitches, and make sure that you aren't losing them, okay. So I just keep pushing this rope up. So I've come through the rope part. Now I'm going to come up through the whole side of the base like this. And with keeping that rope pushed up, I'm going to sew back down on the rope side. And keeping this rope pushed up, I come back through the base. And go back down through the rope. And if I get good enough at this, then I can probably go through both at one time. But I just wanted to show you that, especially if your hands aren't strong enough, that you could just do one side at a time. But you're connecting your new piece of rope to the existing base and rolling it up as you stitch so you'll start to shape this container. It's you that controls when the sides go up, how far they go up. And you're kind of going to pull it, too, because you, you're keeping it a little tighter. But you can see, see how it's starting to go up here? Okay. Come up through. These are the way people have woven baskets for millennia. Whether it is grasses, straws, bee scaps. This is an old, old art. And it's taking something you have and making a useful container out of it. And as you can see, it's pretty nice and stiff. It's wonderful. Okay. And what I love about making the fabric baskets is that you can have them match your decor. And then back down. And if, you, if you're good enough to grab both the side of the base and 
the new edition rope, go for it. But each time when you start, start back up through the base from the bottom. Start with the rope up at the top. And you just, and you, you can see the stitches, but not much. And if you want to, you can work on really hiding those stitches. But that's not going to matter to me. What matters to me right now is that this container is sturdy, will last, and I can enjoy it for years. So I want it steady, not pretty. Well, I want it pretty too, but you know what I'm saying. It doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be magical as to how you put it together. Because if you look at the old baskets, you actually see the reading that they use to put, whether it's straw or um, whether it's some kind of fiber, you can, you can see where they actually did the stitches. So mine are actually going to be hidden a little bit more than traditional baskets were. And I just keep rolling it up as I sew rolling it up can you tell alright you can do this on your machine but to me it's very stressful you have to kind of turn it up on its side and, and, and it's hard on the machine it's hard to get it and since I did this method of casing the rope it's very easy to sew through by hand. If I had done one of those methods where I folded the fabric and then overlapped it, that would be a lot of fabric to sew through. But this is really pretty easy. Just make sure that you're getting a very good sewing connection between the two of these. Okay, so as you can see, it's pretty simple. I need to get some protection on my fingers. I tend to, I, I snug it by pulling the thread across my finger. That gets sore. So it's time for me to go find my thimbles. And I think I'm going to go put my feet up and work on this. And I'll show you every so often just so you see how what the progress is I'm making. I don't bother to pen mine. One of the things I love about sewing is the tactile sense. So I love feeling, experiencing the touch. So I don't need it pinned. I just use my touch. And it's a very satisfying, relaxing way to sew this. Just making sure you keep your threads pulled snug along the way. So I'm going to go upstairs, get in my comfy chair, and work on this. I thought I would give you another progress report on the basket. And it's coming along really, really well. Now, what I did is you just lean when you're sewing it by hand around the edge if you want it to lean out you sew the rows like this if you want it to come in you sew it more like this and just by varying that you can see where I've got the basket coming out to a nice rounded area 
I'll keep it at this stage for a couple more rows and then I'll slowly start angling in. So I am finding one problem with doing it by hand. It takes a long time. I have been working on this most of the day and in fact I had to go make I had to go make some more of the roping. So I will get this done but tell you what it's a lot of work it's a lot of work so now I see why most people do it by uh, machine and the next basket I make to finish this series I will do by machine I think that will show you the difference of what you can get I still think that I get a better shape on this by doing it by hand but I'll keep working on it and in part two you'll get to see this completed. All right, so, and, oh, let me show you my stitches real quick. And you can see how I joined them together. And like I told you, I did it with a double quilting thread. Like I told you, I did it with a double quilting thread so, uh, and, it, and heavily waxed it. So it stays tough. I have to pull it tight, crank it in good, but it leaves the outside of the basket, I think, looking really pretty, really smooth, because if I did it by machine, this is what it would look like, and I didn't really want it to look like that. This is going to be a special one. I won't be doing many of these, but this will be special. All right, and just to give you a hint, it really rubs your hand when you try to turn the casing inside out and then when you run the rope in it. So I used some of the shelf liner to help me to protect my hands because they were getting pretty chafed by the friction of trying to turn all this thin casing inside out and then got a bodkin in, in here and trying to push all this fabric onto the bodkin and then then smooth it out over the rope it's kind of tough on your fingers so you may find that using machinigers gloves or some kind of gloves or a piece of this kind of uh, tacky shelf liner can help but do expect the shelf liner to kind of be ripped and torn while you're using it it's a lot of friction either way working on this basket and in part two, I'll have this, I'll, fin I'll finish this, don't worry. I'm going to finish it with you because I want to show you how I do the handles and the edging. And then we'll do a, a shallow box with a lid. Mm -hmm. 